Well, the mudder brush people have sent me uh, a set of mudder water brushes. Oops. And uh, here they are. 01, 02, 03, 04, 07 and 010. When I first came across water brushes, I thought they were cheap children's toys uh, until I tried them. Um, and I've become a huge convert to water brushes. So what are they? Well, let's take one. Um, you unscrew there, fill up with water and screw it back on again. You don't need a great whoosh of water. Uh, it's quite a big hole there. So you just fill up the handle screw it back together again and there you go so the water is held in the handle and then the brush is at the end here and we have pointy tips thinner pointy tip and that's an even thinner pointy tip and it's quite difficult to judge which one is which that's that's a kind of one criticism i'd have it's very hard to tell which is which um and then we have two here which have uh much bigger brushes now i've not tried big flat brushes like these before in a water brush so it'll be really interesting to try mudder are watching i would really like to have one this big but with a point as well big pointy brushes are nice now i'm working on this little cartoon kind of job for manchester museum there was a time when it would never have crossed my mind to use a water brush so what happens is the water is in the handle and it flows through the brush it works very differently to a standard brush a normal brush you load the color on and off you go this you kind of load the color on but the water flows so as you're painting the water is still flowing and the color is actually getting thinner as you <laughs> as you paint i'm just going to start with putting a little bit of kind of warmth into these penguins tummies and now i've got paint on the brush and i want to clean the brush so i just wipe it on a towel and there we are clean brush the water is flowing down it's constantly cleaning the brush so that is very different to how you normally paint you have this constant water flowing through which means that as you paint the intensity of the color is diminishing but that is not a problem it's just something you have to learn to paint with and it's you just do it differently well now i'm going to paint this sort of ocean in the background and i'm using very fine brushes on this i was going to use other brushes on this job then i thought because i know i needed a fine brush and then I thought, no, I'm going to have a go with this and see see if it works. I'm going to make some possible mistakes as I go along. And I'm not that worried because I know that I can clean things up in Photoshop afterwards. Because this is going to be scanned for printing. This is not <laughs> intended to be stuck in a frame. The shape of the brush and the flexibility of the brush determines the kind of brush strokes you're going to get. So if you point it like that, you're obviously going to get very, very fine brush strokes with this particular brush but then if you're kind of using the side of it you're going to get sort of a, a, a shape <laughs> and again let's just dib dab dib dab and you're clean again and there's going to be text over this ice as well so i want this to be quite not too thick so i'm going to clean the brush and use the clean water that's coming from it to, to thin down the paint that I've put there already. As I say, there's going to be text over this little bit here, so I don't want it terribly blue. But up on the surface, I can have a much bluer kind of um, shadows and things. Now the penguins are quite dark, so uh, I'm going to do the lighter colors first, and the beaks and the eyes. I'm getting really good control with this, this fine nib here. And obviously this is a certain kind of painting um, and if I was outside sketching then I'd be painting in a quite different way. Now, the secret with watercolour is to remember that you're not slapping on paint. Um, you know, it's watercolour is not like oil paint or acrylics, it's very very different. And so with oil paint and acrylics the colour is actually in the paint and the the luminosity of it is in the paint and the light and the color gets reflected into your eyes with watercolor the light is in the paper this is the white paper is reflecting the light you know sometimes you unwrap chocolates and you look through them and they're nice sort of you could you know see the world in different colors so like i say you're putting like transparent films of different color over the top and the light has to shine through so if you slap a load of watercolor on there it won't be as bright as it would be if you made it thinner and let the light shine through it's a different way of thinking 
I'm going to take a bit of a risk and use a larger brush, which I wouldn't normally do, but I'm going to do the sky in a larger brush. So this is now dry, this is as you buy it, and what you do is squeeze it slightly and the water comes through, and now that is kind of loaded and charged. And it's really good for getting water into your palette so that you can clean it. <laughs> And you see it's got blue on there, greeny blue on there. So I'm just going to dib dab dib dab to get that nice and clean. And now what I want is a more bluey blue. I want a touch of that blue. And, and what I'm going to do is try painting <laughs> these big brush strokes. <laughs> It's not something I would normally do. Dry the brush and let it kind of flow like that. So I'm letting the, the blue, oh, it should be going that way really. I'm using the essence of the brush, the fact that it has this water constantly flowing to uh, get this kind of sky effect thing there. I've got text over the top here as well, so I'm constantly thinking about that kind of thing as well. And I also know here that this has got to be kind of space and so I'm thinking I will try to get this bit to merge. I think there was a time when I was obsessed with perfect gradients in watercolour. I'm not that bothered to manage it before. I think it's because when I was first taught to use watercolour, it was actually I was uh, doing maps for the Land Registry, which is kind of a legal kind of entity in the UK. Um, we had to paint in a very particular way and the colours had to be very, very even. And because that's the way I was taught, <laughs> that's the kind of obsession that I <laughs> got. So I know there's going to be text there as well, so I want that to fade. And I want this to kind of fade in here as well. That's where this flow is really good. Yeah, I'll try and make it a bit darker there. And this larger brush is giving me texture as well. And then you dip, dab, dip, dab, dip, dab, even from a really dark colour, and it's clean. It's gone a little bit blue on the end, but that's stain. That's a very staining colour, the blue that I use there. Um, but it doesn't affect the painting. And now where I was saying before about the shape of the brush, this brush has a very different shape. And this gives me nice kind of little wavy little pattern shapes, which I can just kind of drop in there. And then we're going to want it slightly darker. So don't be afraid to use the, the shape of the brush just to help you get a shape and now I'm going to start colouring in the penguins and I need to be quite precise here and this very fine brush is really good for that to get cleanly around the edges. Made a little mistake there but I can fix that in Photoshop. What are my first impressions? They're nice to handle, they're nicely balanced actually, they're quite long um, which obviously means also you're holding more water um, so you get a good weight. It's a very fine precise brush which is holding together very nicely um, like I say, there was a time when I <laughs> thought you could only ever possibly use <laughs> pure sable. For the price of a good sable watercolour brush, you can uh, buy a whole set of these and do an awful lot with them. You, they're so clean, I think especially for kids and schools and things, I think they're brilliant because you haven't got all that brown muddy water in jam jars that you're going to tip over. They're just there, you can pick them up and start painting uh, without having to faff about looking for water and things like that. So always have a water brush with you and a kitchen towel and you can't go wrong. I'm going to take these with me on vacation and I'm going to be using these in my sketchbook so I'll be much freer with them in my sketchbook uh, and I'll tell you all about that in the next video which I will link to up here. I think these are extremely good value for money. There are Amazon links in the comments box below. Just so you know I will get a tiny commission on that but you won't pay any extra. <laughs> so if you're going to buy them, buy them from my links and that will help support this channel. Thanks for watching and you can support this channel and get so much more on my Patreon page. Click to find out more. Make sure you are subscribed to the Shoe Rain and Drawing channel on YouTube and in the meantime, keep drawing, 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 practice, practice, practice and I'll see you next time. You take care now. Bye bye.